Greetings, brothers. Aravin here to bring you my new player guide to the Sniper class in Space Marine 2. Sniper has been my favorite class, and I've put the vast majority of my time into it since the game entered Early Access. But it is definitely at the same time, while very rewarding and powerful in its own right, a very difficult class to play well, especially as a new player. So, Naturally, I've decided to give my take on how you can up your gameplay immediately before you even grind out any perks or weapons, as well as talk about how you can best utilize those early game perks and resources to scale into the mid game smoothly. Now first, we've got to talk about Drip, because that's obviously the most important part of the game. If you're like me and don't know much about the 40k universe, but you want to fit in so all the dedicated fans don't look at you funny, rep Raven Guard and ask no further questions, brothers. With that out of the way, let's get into the real guide, though. The Sniper is a class with some of the highest damage potential in the game, but also the most limited ammo supply alongside the Melta weapons. With great power comes anemic ammo supply, it seems. But this doesn't mean it's a weak class. It just means that we need to be doing everything in our power to make sure those shots are making a massive impact for our battle brothers. To do that, we need the right tool for the job, the Laz Fusel. While it is a weapon that requires a charge up, it is absolutely the best primary to be bringing into your matches if you want a primary that's going to be your workhorse from beginning to end game. It sports unmatched damage per bullet potential that can hit every important breakpoint across the entire early and mid game difficulty spread. One shot right from the beginning will be dropping Majora's level threats in one headshot outright or at the very least sending them into the vulnerable state ready for execution, which to be fair can be at times even better as you'll be providing additional execution iframes and armor to your frontliners. For anyone that can't get the hang of the charge up mechanics, I'd recommend putting your reps in with the carbine. While it'll still take a few shots more than the fusel, it has far more ammunition and can be used more liberally than the fusel can. The bolt rifle, while it is a tempting choice, just misses every key breakpoint you could possibly desire at least in the early game and is all but guaranteed to put a sour taste in your mouth the moment you step foot into level 5 difficulty missions with it. This is going to get us into our second talking point, ammo. You don't have a lot of it, especially if you're going with my recommendations to take the last fusel throughout your early progression. So, we need to make sure those shots are meaningful by only utilizing them to take out Majora's level threats and specifically big game hunting for our squad. Stay in the back line and headhunt the enemy big boys because you drop them much easier than everyone else by a mile. When it comes to fighting the Tyranids, not only will you be eliminating the biggest threat on the block in just a few well-placed shots, but you're frying all the Menorahs around them in the process, sometimes solving entire encounters all on your own with a very modest hit to your fleeting ammo supply. It's through moments like this that you're going to be able to keep feeling like a strong contributing factor within your team composition, which is also something you're going to want to be considering while on the subject. The sniper class can fit into most teams pretty well, but there are definitely allies that you prefer some more than others, such as the tactical. The Auspex Scanner from the Tactical is going to allow you to save tons of ammo when it's deployed on Majora's Threats, thanks to the massive amount of additional damage they receive while scanned. Not to mention allowing you to absolutely shut down extremist encounters and boss encounters with massive chunks of damage being removed from the enemy's health with every shot you fire. With any teammates, the Sniper surely has the potential to top any range damage chart but alongside the tactical you will absolutely dominate this metric should you hit your shots no contest and will feel like a very valuable asset to your squad in doing so all the way through the early game to the end game and again even before you've leveled up anything at all you're also going to want to be paying special attention to all the positions that you see ammo crates spawning in throughout the operations. They have a set amount of spawn locations throughout each operation and move around just a bit when replaying the op. These crates allow you to fire off round after round from the fusel at even minor inconveniences on your screen as long as you manage to keep it close by for an endless supply of ammunition. These boxes are absolutely your 
best friend and you should camp them as long as physically possible when the opportunity arises, as the ammo supply is the only thing keeping the power of the sniper in check when it comes to the fusel. The second you take away this limitation, you are able to solo carry shut down the entire enemy opposition straight up, and it feels absolutely crazy to do every single time. Between these crates and utilizing your ammo well to handle Majoris and extremist level threats in between, you won't be nearly as concerned with ammo as you would be otherwise while contributing plenty to the Emperor's will. Now when the ammo does run dry, the sniper is still more than capable at melee combat. The combat knives, while they are more suited naturally to single target, do have higher cleave options later on to help with ward clear if you desire or you can go with the more parry-focused fencing knives focused on dueling. The starting knife is balanced between the two and offers nothing special in either regard, but it's far from useless. Despite being a dominantly ranged character, not only is there a completely viable melee-focused build that you can run in the end game with Sniper that I'll be covering in a later video, you can more than hold your own in any close encounters when the need arises. Getting the parry timings down for Tyranid Warriors, Raveners, and Lictors is going to massively improve your dueling capability and survivability. Practice makes perfect when it comes to these threats, so don't be shy when it comes to the opportunities to learn when you are still in that early game mission and the stakes for missing that parry are not a full team wipe just yet. Don't be afraid to take these duels when the opportunity comes up, guys. When it comes to dueling and melee combat itself as the sniper, because like I said, that ammo will run dry at times, no matter how good your trigger discipline is, whether that be because the game director threw a ton of Majoris all at once or an extremist far from an ammo box, it's gonna happen. When it does, your bread and butter for horde clearing is going to be to open on the Minoris with a running heavy attack into a bullet strike. This is not only going to stall out the fight, giving you iframes, but restore an armor pip in the process that you likely lost while performing the attack. From there, continually spamming a standing heavy attack into bullet strike through the horde will more or less dwindle them away, trading away that armor pip and health only to instantly regain it back each time. This can be a very strong tactic when you need to stall for your team to revive or you're stalling for your cloak to come off cooldown. While you can the majority of the time just keep rolling away from the enemy and be relatively okay to stall, that realistically isn't going to make the problem any better either. So if you're confident in your ability to keep the tempo, you might as well be doing both at the same time. Keep doing this until you reduce the enemy number to a manageable level or backup arrives. Beyond that, when it comes to dueling Majoris, your best combo is still going to be to open with that running heavy attack to knock them off balance, followed by a light into heavy combination. By this point, they will have likely retaliated, and it'll be time to parry your dodge and begin the dance of death until they eventually go down. Basically, while you should be averse to melee combat, while your resources allow you, as you have much more impact utilizing your rifle, don't be afraid to defend yourself when pushed, especially when holding your cloak ability could be vital to your team's success over wasting it just to de-aggro a few Minoris that you could have mixed it up with instead. Let's talk about the best way to utilize that invisibility. It's going to be crucial to your team's success, trust me. The camo cloak lasts a pretty significant period of time, but it will expire as soon as you take a shot. This only reduces your current ability charge by 20%, however, and executions restore this by 5% each, meaning popping in and out of stealth between high-priority takedowns is very much possible and should be incorporated into your gameplay loop for the most part, especially considering it's going to drop aggro for the opposition and get that horde running towards your tankier teammates. However, when everyone's health begins to sit on low levels, and trust me, this will happen more often than not throughout your gameplay, it's a good idea to actually hold on to this ability as long as possible in these situations, especially if you're unsure of your team's ability to continue to function while redlining. The Camo Cloak can clutch the entire game for your squad, given the right circumstances, due to the fact that you are typically the least likely to go down, given your desired distance from the conflict. 
Coupled with the camo cloak and early game perks spreading this effect to revive teammates, you can revive your entire squad while offering no counterplay to the opposition for a full reset and run save. This situation happened as I was leveling up plenty of times, so keep this play in mind as soon as you start to see those health bars running low. It also goes without saying along with this that as the guy with the ability to save the entire game, you need to be the most careful when it comes to your health. While the sniper gets some extremely powerful perks associated with redlining, you also have the most reason to stay alive in case your team needs you to be their guardian angel and get them back into the mix. Every time you save the game with this play, you're going to feel like an absolute MVP. Now you've played a few matches, you have some resources at your disposal, so what should you spend them on? Well, your first upgrades you'll want to pick up are going to be the mastercrafted beta version of the Fusel. That one additional firepower is going to help you maintain your all-important breakpoints against Majora's threats as you start to take on more difficult missions due to the enemies gaining quite a lot of health at the difficulty increases. We need to stay ahead of this factor. Something a few extra rounds from the Alpha variant are just not going to do for us, unfortunately, as we'll be spending way more shots to get anything meaningful done, throwing away those extra rounds, and then some thanks to that weaker breakpoint. In the lower two difficulties and early game, you'll be taking the extra ammo for your perk on the last fusel. But in the higher difficulties, that 15% charge rate is going to become more valuable alongside the 25% additional charge rate at low health that comes directly after. And trust me, you're going to be spending a lot of time at low HP in the higher difficulties. For your bolt pistol, initially take the beta version, as this is the period in the game that you're going to be the most constrained by your ammo economy, and those extra rounds are going to give you a mark more mileage than that extra point of accuracy would have if you went with the alpha version. Especially considering that our primary is our precision tool in this relationship, while the bolt pistol is our horde weapon. For the first two perks, go with the bottom row. While the extra 10% bossing damage of the first perk is nice and eh, the second perk, Retaliation, is fantastic for dueling, increasing the power of your bullet strike counters after a successful parry or dodge, an already essential part of our game flow by 25%, is going to make these counters pack some serious hurt. Last but certainly not least, for the knife upgrade, go with the beta version yet again. While you might be losing some damage, that really isn't what our knife is about, at least not in the early game. You'll still be able to knock enemies off balance for bullet strikes and maintain the same flow as before against Minoris threats, but the beta crafted knife comes with the fencing defensive style, which has a much more generous and lengthy parry window. Pairing is not just the strongest defensive tool in our arsenal next to heroically rolling away and cloaking, but also one of the best ways to control the battlefield and get momentum back on your side during duels. I highly recommend going down the fencing line of knives the entire way as the parry window is the most important part, in my opinion, compared to the other stat considerations here, thanks to how consistent it makes your dueling capabilities. Last, take the Perpetual Strength perk due to it being a consistent 5% increase in damage. In the flow of battle, you are very rarely at full armor and able to actually utilize that 10% increase from armored strength. So we go with the consistent benefit over the stipulation based one, which of course flows into a stacking heavy damage bonus with kinetic energy, the second perk. Knives are very fast melee weapons, so we can oftentimes land many heavy attacks in a row during duels with Majoris and extremist level threats actually making the stacking bonus quite valuable during lengthy engagements. I'll have full builds and breakdowns on these subjects in the future, but for now, this should be more than enough to get you started. I plan to continue making content on Space Marine 2 well into the game's future, so if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, like and subscribe for more videos to come. If you're looking for more like-minded individuals to play the game with, my community Discord now has Warhammer discussion, lore, and media channels in addition to a looking for group channel dedicated to Space Marine 2 for this exact purpose. And don't worry, I never ping anyone for my channel or streams unless you opt into it, so if you want a comfy place to hang out and enjoy the game, this might be the right place for you to do that. That's all for me for now though, so until next time, may your aim be true.
and ever guide your way, brothers. I'll see you next time.